Two veteran NASA astronauts are gearing up for a historic SpaceX test flight to the International Space Station. We have retired Marine Colonel, that is, Doug Hurley and Air Force Colonel Bob Benkin. They're going to lift off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida this Wednesday, and this mission will mark the first time NASA astronauts will lift off from American soil nearly a decade. Joining me now to speak about this historic mission is NASA's Administrator Jim Bridenstine. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. It is good to be with you. Thank you so much for your time. We know you have an extra busy schedule this week. So again, the week is finally here. I'm excited to witness this very historic event. But why has it taken nearly a decade and what has it been like to prepare for such a big mission? So as a lot of people are aware, um, there was a time uh, back in 2011 when we retired the space shuttles. Um, and then at, the, at that time, um, we, we uh, the United States government canceled um, the replacement for the space shuttle, which was called the Constellation Program. And so we as a nation have been without a human spaceflight capability now for, as you mentioned, almost 10 years. So what we're doing now is we're launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil for the first time since the retirement of the space shuttles back in 2011. We're doing it differently, though. This time when we launch, um, we're going with commercial partners. NASA is not owning and operating the hardware the way we used to. We're partnering with commercial industry. NASA's goal is to be one customer of many customers in a robust commercial marketplace in low Earth orbit. But we also want to have numerous suppliers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation. So we are buying a service to take our astronauts to and from the International Space Station today but in the future, we want to see a very robust commercial marketplace where we've got commercial space stations in orbit that are doing those breakthrough technologies that are going to change life here on Earth. Um, so it's an exciting launch. And of course, we're just two short days away at this point. Yeah, that's why we appreciate you joining us again. That's such an important week. And with so many restrictions in place right now during the pandemic, we can imagine that this has made the process that much more difficult. How have these restrictions affected the launch or even the astronauts protocols? So the astronauts, um, there's there's a, a long history of a protocol where we have our astronauts go into quarantine. We need to get the what we call health stabilization established long before they go to space. And we've been doing that now for 20 years. We've had astronauts on the International Space Station. And our goal is and always has been to make sure we don't let any infections get on board the International Space Station. So our astronauts have been in quarantine, but it's not like really, it's not different than any other launch. Um, but, but I will say it's hard for this agency. Most of this agency um, for the last three months has been uh, working from home. And, and so that, that makes it a lot more difficult when, when we're working from home. But I will tell you this, um, this is a mission essential function. We have been buying rides from Russia for the last 10 years to get access to the International Space Station. Well, that, that era is going to end, and we're going to have our own access to the International Space Station. And I just want to say I'm grateful to this administration. President Trump appointed Vice President Pence to be the chairman of the National Space Council. They have supported us with resources. They have supported us with policy. And we're finally getting to that point where we're ready to launch American astronauts again. And I expect that they will be joining you guys there on Wednesday. We are very excited to show that to our viewers. Now, again, it's a very exciting moment just thinking of future missions, one of them being to Mars. So how does this lay the groundwork for further space exploration? It's very important. So this mission is to the International Space Station, which is in low Earth orbit. Um, but the president laid out a very aggressive agenda to get to the moon sustainably. His very first space policy directive uh, said that we're going to go to the moon, we're going to go sustainably. In other words, we're going to stay at the moon. We're going to learn how to live and work on another world for long periods of time. We're going to use the resources of the moon. In other words, the hundreds of millions of tons of water ice. Water ice represents oxygen. It's air to breathe. It's water to drink. But it's also hydrogen which is rocket fuel, the same rocket fuel that powered the space shuttles. And it's available in hundreds of millions of tons on the surface of the moon. And we're going to learn how to live and work on another world, in other words, the moon. We're going to build the architecture that is necessary for us to go all the way to Mars. 
The challenge with Mars is that Earth and Mars are on the same side of the sun once every 26 months. So when you go, you have to be willing to stay for long periods of time. The way we prove it out is we go to the moon and we, we're calling the program Artemis. Artemis in Greek mythology is the twin sister to Apollo. We love the Apollo program of the 1960s and the early 1970s. Um, but in this era, we get to go to the moon with all of America, including women. So we're naming the program after Apollo's twin sister, Artemis, and we're looking forward. We've been given direction by the president to land the next man and the first woman on the South Pole of the moon by 2024. And that's what we're rapidly um, racing towards. And we all can't wait to witness that. Now, before I let you go, one more quick question, Jim. Why does Rice play Texas? <laughs> Well, boy, I'll tell you, you just hit a nerve on that one. Um, Rice plays Texas because Rice beats Texas. That's why we play Texas. I will tell you, I was standing on the sidelines in 1994 as a, as a Rice undergraduate student. And of course, you're asking that question. A lot of your audience may not know, but when John F. Kennedy challenged America to go to the moon, he said, why do we climb the highest mountain? Why do we cross the ocean? And then he said, why does Rice play Texas? We do these things because they are hard. Um, and that's why we go to space. That's why we go to the moon. That's why we explore. We're making new discoveries all the time. Just in the last two years, we have found liquid water 12 kilometers under the surface of Mars. Mars is covered with complex organic compounds, the building blocks for life. They don't exist on the moon at all, but they exist all over Mars. The probability of finding life on another world keeps going up. And in order to do that, we have to do difficult things. That's why Rice plays Texas, but I will also tell you, in 1994, I was on the sidelines when Rice beat Texas 19 to 17. So thank you for that important question. I thought you would appreciate it. And if I may add in there, it's the power of winning. Thank you very much for your time, Jim. We really appreciate it. Always. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.